Hey there, everybody. What's going on? It's Nook. Welcome along to episode number three of my Minecraft Let's Play. Hope you are all well. Thank you very much, everybody, for tuning in to the first two episodes and for all your helpful feedback and comments. Thank you very much indeed. Now, between episodes, I've actually been a little bit busy. I decided that I was going to do some tasks off camera just to kind of keep these episodes flowing uh, a little bit. So first and foremost, I added some bone meal to this grass here just to give myself some flowers and grass and a bit of extra kind of texture outside my base. I think it's quite nice. It just adds a different element and a different texture. Like I said, this is what I wanted. Secondly, you'll notice I reverted back my strip logs so that they're all in one direction. Thinking back, this looks a lot better than it did before. It just flows a lot nicer and it looks a lot better. Also, that spider's wrecking everything. How dare you? How dare you? I haven't got my sword on me. So having punched a spider to death, let's get back to what I was talking about before. I've moved the orientation of these blocks so that they all face the same way and I'm a lot happier. I've done also done the same with the cow farm. I've also now added a composter here as well. I had a lot of wheat seeds going spare. So I was like, let's add a composter and we can uh, start getting some bone meal. As you'll notice over here as well, we've also made some changes to our cow farm. Or a cow pen, should we call it? It's not really much of a farm. We'll just call it a cow pen for now. I decided I was gonna, just going to sink it into the ground. And one of the reasons for that is it's just a lot easier to go in there and kill the cows and actually get out. I had a big trouble with the cows trying to escape in my previous one. So that sorts everything out and it just makes everything a lot easier to deal with in respect to the cows. And I added these trap doors here just so I can walk around quite nicely. And then when I'm, I'm down here, I can just pop up that trapdoor there's a ladder out we come as you can see i've also done the stripped logs here as well just to make them all go the same way and i've added some strip logs in on that second layer down as well just to give it a nice wooden feel all the way down we've moved some sugar cane over here i was not really paying much attention to any of that sugar cane over there and i was growing all this sugar cane and it was kind of going to waste so i took the decision to move the sugar cane farm nearer to my base in the hope that i will remember to look at it and i will actually remember to harvest it every now and again I've also started on the path. I couldn't do these because these were dirt blocks. I've had to wait for the grass to grow back on those blocks. That's why the path hasn't been completed to this point. And finally, if we head downstairs into our storage area, I actually did a one hour mining session. This is everything we got from that mining session. So I just headed down into the caves we were in the first episode. But rather than crawling around in the one by one space, now I am decided I was going to use normal strip mining in a two by one sort of area. A little under an hour actually, I think I ran out of pickaxes so I came back a little bit before the hour was up. This is everything that we managed to collect which is quite nice because I did use a, another diamond pick. So we've replenished that and gained a profit in diamonds as well. Which let's face it, is always a good thing to have. I didn't put these into the storage for now. I just wanted to show at the beginning of this episode the resources that I had gathered from that session. So I'll go ahead and sort these into our storage and then we'll talk about what we're going to be doing in this episode. There was one further thing that I did in between the episode and that was down here. I just put in some glass here just as a little sort of viewing area just so I can see all of my furnaces in the smelter. I've just put all my ores that I'd gathered from the previous mining session in here but this is quite nice. I get to see if the furnace is working, whether there's a specific furnace that isn't working. And it'll be a good indicator for me as well when I'm running out of fuel. So if I put some items in the smelting system and I'm not getting anything out, I can actually see if the furnaces are on or not. And I know that I need to chuck some coal back in the system. So having covered all my progress between episodes, it's time to discuss what we're going to be looking at today. I think looking back at the previous episode, I think I did kind of do too much in that episode. And a lot of it was crammed. So I'm going to try and do a little bit less per episode. So I'm going to try and have a few less goals per episode and maybe every now and then just do a bit of a bumper episode with a little bit more included. So with that said, I have three goals for today's episode. Goal number one is to create a melon and a pumpkin farm or at least have the blueprints for both of them in the area upstairs. I've already got some pumpkins 
but I really want some melon. So we're going to head off into that jungle biome that's a little bit behind our base. And we're going to go see if we can find ourselves some melons. Goal number two for this episode, we are going to build ourselves a nether portal. This is going to be a pretty easy goal, given that I used to have a lava pit just on this level. And I filled it all with water and created a bunch of obsidian. So it's just going to be a matter of mining it, setting it up, lighting it, and seeing what the nether has to offer in our starting location. Finally, I want to create an enchanting table. I'm really starting to feel the effects of not having unbreaking and efficiency and things on my pickaxes because I've been burning through pickaxe like hotcakes. I'm not gonna lie. So goal number three, get an enchanting table set up. I've got the resources I need. I need to make some books, some cow breeding's gonna need to go on for some leather. So all in all, I think we've got a good set of goals to get us going in this episode. Now we're gonna want some food, we're gonna need some tools, we'll take our shield, we don't know what we're gonna find. And that should do us for now, I don't really see a need for anything else. We are only looking for melons, may bring a bit of jungle wood back down. It is night time though, so let's go and get some rest and then we will head out into the jungle. One thing I had forgotten about was torches, just in case we get left out there when it's dark. It's gonna be quite important here not to get too close to the village. I don't want to mess anything up with that village until I get across there and we're greeted by a creeper. No! Man, my combat's rubbish. Hey, chicken. We need to get some chickens at some point as well. Okay, so let's head on into the jungle. Now, I'm really quite excited to head on over here. I've never found or explored a jungle temple before, so this should be Pretty interesting. And if my looks anything to go by, it'll probably be pretty deadly too. Bamboo is something we definitely want to get hold of. Oh, cocoa beans, we'll take those as well. Do, do cocoa beans need to grow on jungle wood or can they grow on anything? That's a good question. I'm making a meal of trying to get to this temple. What are you doing? Okay, we found the temple. Now, the only thing I really know about these things is they have tend to have traps in them with oh there's a creeper starting to think i should have got some i should have reorganized my priorities for this episode and i should have got some enchanted gear first and how fast was that how fast was that no 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 all right we got some bows albeit i nearly destroyed one and we got some arrows as well and I'm in the water, so now we're gonna climb back up there. Okay, so there's another thing up here. I guess we've got to go down then. Watch out for them. Never been to a jungle temple before, so I don't really know what switches and things do. However, watch them. Watch them for them, them tripwires. Arrows. Should have brought a pickaxe. All right, I'll take the gold. I'll take the rotten fresh because rotten fresh will come in handy later for villager trading. I should have brought a pickaxe with me. I never thought about getting the dispensers. That was something shifting with pistons. So I'm a little confused as to where something just happened clearly heard the pistons moving but I just can't find did I hastily throw some switches when I shouldn't have done ah that wasn't like that before okay so that and that does that allow me down it does huzzah there we go we have bones, we have gold, we have bamboo. Excellent. I also have some redstone goodness. I'm going to come back for these pistons though, for sure. And we're going to have the nerd polo way out here, which is a shame. First jump, jungle temple experience. And it's pretty dark in here now. Let's chance it and see if we can make our way home in the dark. Swim run and hope to god 
we don't get sniped. And I guess that answers my question about the creepers. The creepers now exploding water. Oh, I did not think about this. Swim away, knock. Swim away. Hey, we got melons, though. We got melons. Although I think I need to make a melon block to be able to get seeds. Okay, I'm going to chicken out and I'm going to just camp here tonight. And then once the daylight comes, I will go and um, re adventure because I'll be honest. I don't really fancy my chances out there against all their mods, especially not with any enchanted stuff. So we're going to wait out the night and we'll be back momentarily. And if you hadn't guessed it by now, yes, I am a scaredy cat. Maybe you could even call me a chicken in more ways than one. All right, guys, the day has come. So I'm going to actually branch out of here now and we're going to head home, grab a pickaxe, come back, get what we want from here. Then I think we'll head home and call it a job well done okay so we've made it back from the jungle temple and i actually did something quite smart i had some gold so i thought let's just punch down a tree and make a gold pickaxe to save me having to come all the way back so we've got everything we've got the trip wires we've got the dispensers we've got the sticky pistons while i was out there i also checked on the melons now you can actually get melon seeds from melon slices so we don't need to go and find any more slices to be able to make our melon and pumpkin farm so that is a positive result we are going to do next though is we're going to go and make our nether portal i think it's probably wise let's go through here these things are just the worst they really are. So as I was saying, we're going to get some obsidian here to make our nether portal. I can still hear some silverfish somewhere. I don't know where they are. Maybe they're above here in this area. Also, our pickaxe is going to die anytime soon. Okay, so I decided to save myself a bit of time here. And rather than mining everything out, I decided to place my obsidian on top of the obsidian on already on the floor. So we have our 3x3 three three portal block right here. So now all that leaves us to do is make a flint and steel. ka -ching. Okay, let's tidy up some of these resources and we'll head off into the nether. It's time to light this bad boy in three, two, one. There we go. Nether portal made. Now I have got my stack of cobblestone here because I do like to have it in the nether just in case I need to quickly fortify around my nether portal. But let's go and see what we have to offer and we are right in a warped forest that's pretty cool i've really been to warped forests before okay so i'm just going to quickly fortify my never portal with cobble obviously we can make more improvements to that as the time comes so while i'm here we're just going to have a quick scout around, see if we can find any nether quartz. Now, I don't know if nether quartz spawns in all biomes. I mean, there is some up there. So maybe. Okay, I see some quartz over here. Let's try and make our way over here. I don't even know what like the best tool is to break all these sorts of things. Is it an axe? They kind of like trees, so maybe it's an axe. I never even thought about the potential of uh, piglins here. Really don't want to come across any piglins this early on. It was a pretty dangerous place at normal times, but nerd polling in the nether is probably not the smartest thing to do. Do you know what? It's so peaceful in this area of the nether. There's no ghasts. There's no zombie pigmen. It's really quiet. I seem to remember reading something that since 1.16, ghasts only spawn in certain biomes. Maybe. Maybe I'm making that up. I don't know. But that seems to ring a bell still really strange for me to see Enderman in the nether. I don't know. It's just bizarre. Man, that Enderman went fast. Okay, we've got well over half a stack of nether quartz here. That'll see us through for these few little projects that we need to do. So we'll pop back through into the real world. And then 
and we can look to create our enchanting table. Exciting stuff. So let's work on an enchanting table. Now what do we need for the enchanting table? We're gonna need a book, and for a book we're gonna need paper. We need obsidian. What else do we need? Oh, do we need, I think we need three obsidian. No, I'm still missing something. Turns out I was way off. You need diamonds and four obsidian, but there we go. We have an enchantment table. Now we need to work out where we're gonna put this. Just trying to think where's best gonna be. It's like we don't have enough room here. Okay, new plan, I've cleared out an area here and we're going to put it along here. Now I think the design is, if I was to put this there, and then we can put four across. I think it should still get it here. So now we need just a couple of bookshelves just to test out where we can and can't put different bits and pieces here. Okay, I have my bookshelf. And we're looking for the particle effect. That's what we're looking for. Looking for that particle effect. Okay, I need to so go grab my axe. Uh, but I need tilt touch. Uh, <laughs> I think, however, I only need to test that location there. Can you pick up on that? Yes, you are. So we're gonna to need to make another 14 bookcases. Each bookcase has three books. That's 30, 42 books. We have 17 leather, so we need another 25 pieces of leather. Calculating time. A short farming session later. So if my calculations are all correct, we should now have enough resources to make our remaining bookshelves. Okay. Bookshelves, how many can we make? 14. Bang on the money. We may not have a lot of cows left, but at least we have enough leather to make the books for the bookshelves. Okay, all our bookcases are in place. And we should be getting some good enchantments now. Okay, so let's go through. We're gonna make ourselves a brand new diamond pick. Okay, brand new diamond pick. We have unbreaking three. And Silk Touch. That is really good for a first enchant. Looting three, I will take that. And Sweeping Edge three. I know it's only on an iron sword, but it'll do us for now. And let's get enchantment three on this book. And we'll start stockpiling some enchanted books. Excellent. So there we go, two tasks already completed so far in this episode, and that just leaves us with the task of creating our melon and pumpkin farm upstairs. Let's get right ahead with that. Woohoo! First thing we're gonna need is Observer. I need to remember how this is. I think it's Cobble, Nether Quartz. Yes, there we go. Okay, so I think we'll just concentrate on the melons for now. So I'm just gonna make four of these. Once I've completed the melon farm, I'll replicate it for the pumpkin farm off camera, just so we don't have to go through two different farms in this episode. Pistons, we're gonna want iron, I think. Pistons, there we go, okay. So we're gonna want four pistons, four observers, four dirt blocks, or melon seeds. We need our hoe. And we're gonna need some water. I'll be honest, I didn't wanna go outside because I know that there are illages out there, but we need water. So now that we've got all our resources, what are we actually gonna do with them? And how are we gonna get this working? I wanted to put it in this area, but having these tiles on the floor may not lend themselves very nicely to that. I think we'll go back this way a little bit. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay, so we could have some strips here. Okay, let's let's do some mining. Take this back out a bit further and then we'll go from there. So nice having silk touch. We're gonna have stone for days now. I shouldn't have to smell any sort of stone up ever again now, which is awesome. <laughs>
I feel like such an idiot right now. So as you saw from them clips, I fumbled around here for a good 15, 20 minutes thinking I knew what I was doing. Turns out I really didn't. <laughs> so my idea was to create like a strip of this farm down one side and I wanted melons one side and pumpkins the other. Somehow I decided that I was going to do it this way and then I tried to wire it up and the piston wasn't firing. Then I punched a block and I lost a melon seed and uh, everything just went really wrong. It was a pretty hopeless effort if I do say so myself. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to head over to my testing world and I'm actually going to mock something up before we actually get into a build because clearly I don't know what I'm doing. So that's not good. Okay, so I'm in my testing world here and this is what I've actually created. I've turned up the random tick speed as well to 250 just to test this out. So I've got my observer set above my plant that is growing. I've then got the solid block for the plant to push over the fully grown block and then the pistons activate as soon as there is a, a growth change here and that actually pushes the melon down through the block into the hoppers and then they end up in some chests like over here. Now one thing I have noticed while I've been stood here is we are getting a bit of wastage and I'm just wondering if I was to encase this in some sort of block does that prevent the wastage? I think it might however there's not enough light here now. So let me replace this with glass blocks. Okay, that's been replaced now with glass blocks. And... Is it any quicker? I mean, it's just random. So maybe I'm thinking about it too much. But it's quite a simple design. We just have the observer with the piston, redstone dust on top. And then in this channel here, we've got all our water to keep the melon land hydrated. A row of hoppers leading into a chest and I just added a double chest in there just for the, the time being but we've not been here for too long we've already got almost four stacks of melon from this thing granted we're running the tick speed at 250 normal games tick speed is 20 but I think I'm happy with this at least now I've got a plan of what we're going to do. So let's jump back in the world and try and construct this in survival. Before I do any building though, I'm just going to have to wait it out for a moment just for these melons to grow here because I've wasted three seeds and that only leaves us with one left. So yeah, we're just going to have to wait this one out for now, I think. Having said that though, we can leave that there. I've taken down all the redstone pieces and we can actually start to build over on this side here. Let me start off by creating an infinite water source just so we can fill up our buckets here. Okay, so I just need to think about how this is going to work. Let me go and grab a chest from downstairs. So let's start planning this out. We're gonna want a chest here, which is gonna be our collection chest. So we'll have a hopper running into here. And then our other hopper lines will run here. So let's mark this out. One, two, three, four. So that's where our hoppers will be. Meaning we're going to want some dirt across here, which will be our space to have it grown. Add our water there. And then we have our land here. And that's my concern. We're running dangerously close here to the surface level, which isn't ideal. We've still not got enough room here though. Unless I sink it down another level. Okay, I've gone down an extra level here, just to level with the top of these chests here. Doing that will give me extra room on top, which I hope will solve our problems. Isn't this our melon chest here? It is, it's our melon chest. Okay, okay. So in effect, we don't need this chest here. Hopper going into there. So in effect, uh, I don't want it so close to the edge though. I mean, in effect, we could have, we could run it here. Glass it off. 
No, I'm going to run it back. That's another one. So it's all our water in place. They're going to be our melons. These are going to come across here. Where it's going to grow. So I have melon seed. Uh, still not got enough room. Maybe. 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 Okay. Excellent. Our observers are in. It's all about believing in yourself, guys. Confidence is key. Okay, now we have our observers in place. We're going to place our pistons. Two, three, four. Now our pistons are in place. We just need to put some dust all over here. Like that. I see a melon grown. Oh, it's all coming together now. Next, we need hoppers. We need five hoppers. We already have the chests, so we just need some iron. I realized in a previous episode as well, I was calling these funnels. And I don't know if there is really a difference between hoppers and funnels or if it's if you've got any problems with me calling them that but if i triggered you in any sort of way i do apologize for now though four will be enough and we just need to quote unquote till our land is that what you call it tilling i'm sure you do that's a good sign I think what's quite nice about this design as well it's very modular and it can be expanded pretty easily we are done just do that just to square that end off so that means we can tear this down also oh maybe you only get melon seed back when it's a fully established plant and there we go it's all tidied up i guess now we just got to play the waiting game. Make sure everything grows. Our first melons are finally trickling through the system. Success. And in between clips there, I've actually built the pumpkin farm on the other side. Now I've considered maybe building this as a bit of a greenhouse, glasshouse kind of thing, which is why I've kind of added the windows over there. But yeah, so far we have four plants of each. Everything is running just fine. I've even put myself a little bit of an AFK area just over here, just so I can stand here in between and hopefully generate a considerable number of these crops, which will help us when we come around to villager channel. So there's a pigman in my base and he's making a rather lot of noise. Where'd you go? Hey, get out of my bed. Go on. Go on, off we are. Back down to the nether. And that, ladies and gentlemen, brings us to the end of episode three of my Minecraft Let's Play. I hope you've enjoyed this episode. I feel that the episodes flowed better and it's been easier to manage because I've had smaller goals. But let me know in the comments. Let me know how I did in this one. If you've got any ideas for things that I should be building or designing in my world, please do let me know. I think in episode four, we'll be heading on over the water and checking out that villager farm. I think that's going to be episode number four because I'm really quite nervous about affecting the village the more I go in and around that area. If it's anything like the village in my other single player world, then there's going to be a massive hole. There could be mobs there. I mean, as far as I know, all the villages could already be dead. So that's really something we're going to have to go and investigate. And I want to do that sooner rather than later. So next episode, we'll be heading on over to the village. We'll be securing it for the villagers. And hopefully we will start looking at how we can develop that village and do some villager breeding. But thank you very much, everybody, for watching. Hope you enjoyed the episode. And until next time, goodbye.